my name is Jan Foreman. Welcome to Daily Hope. Today we're going to look at Numbers chapter 30, which talks about making a vow to God. The second verse reads, When a man makes a vow to the Lord or makes an oath to obligate himself by a pledge, he must not break his word, but must do everything he said. Have you ever been in a tight spot and made a desperate promise to God if you would just answer your prayers? I think we all have. When I was 12 years old, I heard about the great magnitude 9.2 earthquake in Alaska in 1964. I read the description of cars, houses, even people being swallowed alive. And then I read another article about the possibility of half of California falling into the Pacific, and I became deathly afraid of earthquakes, so I made a vow to God. Spare me from falling into the ocean from an earthquake, and I will read my Bible every day. Now, you may laugh at my bartering with God as a 12-year-old, but first of all, I'm still here, and reading my Bible wasn't a bad thing, so it's not a bad result from that secret promise. But Numbers 30 talks about more serious vows, promises made publicly before God and the whole community, and it offers some protection for young girls like my 12-year-old self, loopholes so they could get out of their vows. Because, in fact, I haven't read my Bible every single day, and I wonder how many of our promises that we make in a crisis are what Mary Poppins called pie crust promises, easily made and easily broken. Jesus addresses this whole dilemma in Matthew chapter 5, verse 33. Again, you have heard it said to the people long ago, Do not break your oath, but keep your oaths you have made to the Lord. But I tell you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot even make one hair white or black. Simply let your yes be yes and your no, no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Let your yes be yes. Be faithful. Just do what you say. In the words of Dr. Seuss, Horton the Elephant, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful 100%. Jesus tells us here how the Father wants us to be honest, straightforward with him and with others. Just People who keep our word, no bartering, arm twisting, games, power plays, no grand statements to impress the crowd. We simply ask God for things and then do what we say. Because here's the truth. We have very little control over heaven or earth or even the color of our hair. We are mere humans who can't always control the outcome of the big promises that we make. So Jesus reminds us to drive in our lane as God's kids. As mere humans, we're not God. So what might that look like? If I'm not sure I can make a commitment, it is okay to say no, to be realistic, not over-promising and under-delivering. And then especially in my relationship with God, I simply tell him what I need, what I want him to do, and then I can return the favor and ask him what he wants me to do. So in my 12-year-old dilemma, I could have just told God I was afraid of earthquakes and asked for his protection. And I already had a nudge for what he wanted me to do, to pick up that paperback, good news for modern man, sitting on my shelf and start reading. And so instead of offering that as a bartering chip, I might simply tell God, you know what, I want to start reading it regularly. And that's how God the Father wants us to come to him, not as clever negotiators, but honestly, as his kids who know the Father's great love for us. So are you in a tight spot? What do you want God to do? Tell him. And if there's a nudge from God about something he wants you to do, simply say Yes. Now we invite you to join us this weekend for our online services starting tonight at 5 o'clock. God bless you.